Hello, I'm Mrs. J, and welcome to my math class. Today we're going to cover complex numbers. And complex numbers are when it has the negative under square root, which is also called imaginary numbers. So we have the square root of a negative 1. That's our i. And if we square that, get negative 1. So if, as long as you know these two, you can find any of them. Um, so if we're finding the square root of a negative 16, the negative becomes an i, and the square root of 16 we know is 4. So it's 4i. not always a perfect square root. In this case, the i comes out, or the negative becomes the i, but 8 is 4 times 2. And the square root of 4 is 2. So you can break it up this way. You can use a factor tree. It's up to you how you like to reduce your radicals. But the square root of 4 would be 2i radical 2. When you're multiplying, <clears throat> as long as the radicals are the same, you can just multiply what's inside of them. So if we take 3 times 12, we get a negative 36. And then you can reduce it. So it was easier to multiply it first and then reduce. And we get negative becomes i, square root of 36 is 6. So our answer is 6i. Most complex numbers are written in this form, and if you think of your square root rules when you're adding and multiplying, you can follow those same rules with the imaginary. So if we had 2 plus 3i minus 1 plus 2i, we use the same rules. The imaginary part are like terms, and the constants are like terms. And in this case, we would first distribute the negative. And then combine your like terms. 2 minus 1 is 1. 3i minus 2i is 1i. So adding and subtracting, just combine like terms. So if we had... First, we would distribute the 2. So you're simplifying just like when you had variables. We would first distribute that 2. So 1 plus 3i plus 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2i. Combining like terms, 6 and 1 is 7. And then 3i minus 2i is a positive i. So adding and subtracting, you just combine. Multiplying you need to be careful um, because you'll end up with the i squared and remember i squared is negative 1. So when we multiply these, we have 2 times 3, because we're going to FOIL it, 
is 6. Multiplying the outside, we have a negative 4i. Multiplying the inside, we have 3i. And the last two, we have a negative 2i squared. Now we need to combine like terms. We can combine these two and we get a minus i or minus 1i. Having the 1 is not wrong if you put the 1 here. But then this, remember i squared is a negative 1. So we have 6 minus i. This gives us plus 2. And then we can combine the 6 and the 2 and get 8 minus i. Try one more like that. Now notice these two are similar. They're exact same quantities except the opposite middle term. And that makes them conjugates. Conjugates are important when you're working with fractions. And when you multiply these conjugates, the i's will disappear. So it will no longer be an imaginary number. And that's why it's important. So if we FOIL this, multiplying the first two, we get x squared. The outside, we get a positive 3i. The inside, we get a minus 3i. And then the last two, negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9. i times i is i squared. Notice our middle terms cancel. We have 9 times i squared is negative 1. Negative and a negative makes it a positive 9. So we got rid of the imaginary part. Anytime you have something you want to try and get rid of the imaginary part, um, you multiply by its conjugate. In some cases, we'll work with higher powers than just i squared. And what you can do is rewrite it as i squared. What I mean is, this could be written as i squared to the fifth. Because remember, an exponent to an exponent is multiplied. 2 times 5 is 10. We know i squared is a negative 1. And negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 to an odd power leaves a negative 1. So if we had i to the 20... Um, 8. Well, we'd rewrite it. i squared, and then what times 2 will give me 24, 28? What times 2 will give me 28? And that's 14. So we put our negative 1 for i squared. Since we're taking it to an even power, negative 1 to an even power would be a positive 1. Well, that's a really nice when it's even, but what about when it's odd? So if we had an 11, or no, let's, not, let's use one that won't be 15. So if we had 15, we could pull one of the i's out first. And then do the i to the 14th, and we're left with an i as part of our answer. i squared to the 7th. So the 14, 2 times 7 is 14. Then when we plug in our i squared is a negative 1. 
negative 1 times the 7th is going to be a negative. So it will be a negative 1i. Or negative i. I guess there's one more case we can do it. I to the 17. Because it's odd, we want to pull one out. That way then we can write this as 2 to a power. So we have our i, and then we have i squared to the 8th, because 2 times 8 is 16. Keeping our i, i squared is a negative 1 to the 8th. Negative 1 to an even power is a positive 1, and so we just have 1i or just i. That's everything with complex numbers. Thank you. So we have 23 minutes. Why are you looking at this? What are you doing? My son's Christmas tree. He's missing McDonald's. Haven't had it since school closed in March. Bye. Come on. Stop.